All right. All right, guys, we're trying to clean the sugar cane out. We're going to be fertilizing it today. I'm leaving the clover in it. I'm not taking it out because it's a red crimson clover. It's a nitrogen fixer. And it's going to die as soon as this hot sun hits it anyway. And it'll just be more mulch in there. We're basically trying to get any weeds out of it before they go to seed. And uh, hopefully this method of planting sugar cane is going to work out better for us. Ms. Wanda discovered this online this past fall. And we tried it, planting it in clumps like this. This is a five foot circle. We put the sticks in the ground, covered them up. We got videos on that. We'll put it in a description of, I mean, a uh, section up above here. And uh, we're just gonna go from clump to clump, cleaning out mostly the weeds. And then we're gonna come back and fertilize it. And then we're gonna come back and all the weeds that we throwed out around the sides, we're gonna take the lawnmower and blow them back into we're going to chop them up and blow them back into his as a mulch because they have not gone to seed or anything like that. So we're really not worried about them going to, you know, having a seed problem. So that's the next plan. It's just go from clump to clump to get them cleaned out. We've done uh, mowed down all the red clover that was around the outside of this sugar cane. It has done gone to seed. The reason this inside hasn't is because when this first started coming up, we was going to have a freeze. And I didn't want to lose the uh, sugar cane to the freeze, so we took a bale of hay that we had and we opened it up and spread it all over the top of the sugar cane. And as a result, what happened is um, all the clover seeds in that has now began to come up, but it's going to be too hot for it to do too much. So we're. Uh, you know, we're going to leave it, let it just go as much as it can. But we did mow the rest of it down. A lot of wood sorrel in this too, though. The wood sorrel we're going to take to the chickens. Yeah, they'll, they'll like that. A lot of weeds, though. Nice pile for the chickens. Bunch that the lawnmower can mulch up and blow back in there on it after we fertilize it. All right, two down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven more to go. <laughs> we'll get there. chicken food. Once uh, got, now we got it cleaned out, you're probably going to see them start popping up out of the ground.
Well, guys, that's all there is to it. Now we will not have to touch the sugar cane again for probably another month at least. We'll come in then and we'll fertilize it again and take out any weeds that need to be taken out and mulch it again. And then we'll may fertilize it one more time late summer. And then we'll just wait till fall and we'll be ready to harvest our cane. Another reason we put the sugar cane back here was since we put the pond in here, when we first put the pond in, this place stayed so wet, we couldn't even get in here with a lawnmower. As a matter of fact, I bogged it down many times, had to get pulled out. And I told Wanda, I said, we put that sugar cane in here. Sugar cane loves low, wet areas. Um, it'll probably help dry it out, and I'm telling you. <laughs> of course, we're in a moderate drought right now. But when the pond starts filling back up from the rains, from the hurricanes this year and things that happen, um, I really believe it's going to do good because the water table is only a, just a few feet below the actual sugar cane here now. So that should keep the cane with plenty of water and plenty of nutrition to keep it going. We had our sugar cane here long before we ever built a pond here. And water was never an issue. As a matter of fact, it was a little bit dry then. But since we put the pond in, it stays a little damper up in here. And there's always water right there, if not far from it. So we're praying that uh, the cane actually does really good here this year. So thank you guys once again for watching. And thank you from Deep South Homestead.